Welcome to the Cabral Concept, where board-certified naturopath and integrative health practitioner Dr. Stephen Cabral shares how he was diagnosed at the age of 17 with a life-altering illness and given no hope for recovery. It was only after studying and traveling all over the world did he discover how to combine ancient Ayurveda healing practices with state-of-the-art naturopathic and functional medicine to fully rebalance the body and re-energize it with life. It's time to discover how to get well, lose weight, and finally feel alive again. And now, here's your host, Dr. Stephen Cabral. Hi, everyone, and welcome back to the Cabral Concept. It's great to have you here today. I'm looking forward to getting into a new show where we're actually going to be going over a topic that I'm getting quite a bit of questions on, and that is, are your symptoms that of a cold, a virus, or allergies. And believe me, this is a timely topic because allergy season is in full swing and it will be peaking in a couple of weeks from now. So truly important to understand that a lot of the symptoms you may be feeling, you may confuse with that of the virus that many of us, of course, have been following. So what I want to do is either alleviate some of the fears that you have right now or let you know when it could be something more serious that you should be paying attention to for yourself or your family, and then, of course, seeking any type of medical-based help that you may need. So what I'll do is I will give you some items and action steps for a cold, for a virus, and, of course, for allergies. We'll make sure all of that gets uh, put in throughout the entire show, and then if you head on over to stephencabral.com forward slash 1517, I will actually share with you a nice chart that will succinctly show you in three columns whether the symptoms are that most likely of a cold, of a virus, and of allergies. And then what I'll do is add more context to it in today's show because there's a lot more depth that goes into this than simply following a chart. That's also one of the reasons why I really recommend to people, you know, reading books, going much more in depth than a social media post and an article. And I know most people listen to this are not one of those people to just jump to conclusion. But I have to tell you, over the past couple of weeks, the amount of people that are simply floating ideas, and I would say quite dangerously, it has to be stopped. And that's because when we are putting things out hypothetically or theoretically or basing it off very little information or hearsay, what it does is it causes more of a fear-based frenzy, and that's what, not what we need right now. So let's stick to what we do know. Let's stick to the facts. Let's stick to research and not hypothesize about what could be going on in the world today. So let's read it all. Let's look at it. But again, I want to really ask you to take a step back and just say, okay, is this someone trying to create some notoriety around this particular issue in themselves? Or is it someone that's actually looking to teach and to share some researched and proven based information? Okay, let's dive into today's show. Again, all the information that you may be looking for surrounding up-to-date updates on the COVID-19 virus are at stephencabral.com forward slash virus. I do just want to reiterate that I'm not going to make every show around the COVID-19 virus. And that's because I want to make sure that when you are looking for other information, and you should be, for your overall health and wellness beyond trying to protect yourself, your family from this virus, which I think is very important, that there is other information out there and that we fill our heads with more information than the fear of getting this particular virus. All right. So thank you for tuning in today and let's dive right into today's show. We're going to start with the most common symptoms of a cold. Now, the most common symptoms of a cold are going to vary from that of a flu or a virus, I should say the flu being a virus, or allergies. Now, many of them will have similarities, and that's what we need to make sure we truly differentiate from. But what I'll do is I'll go through each one first, and then I'll tie them all together by fever, by congestion, etc. All right, so the commonalities with a cold, and of course they can vary from person to person, is going to be some aches and pains in the body, but not the true joint pain felt by that of the flu or a virus. There's also fatigue that comes along with any particular type of immune-based symptom. So for example, if you have a cold, if you have a virus, if you have allergies, there's going to be some fatigue. But with a common cold, it could be mild to low fatigue and weakness, all right? So it's not going to be major. 
When it comes to do you get itchy eyes, do you get an itchy throat, some of the symptoms of allergies, very rarely. However, you can get watery eyes, meaning your eyes and nose can run, but not the itchiness that goes along with it. The sneezing and sore throat, the runny nose, the stuffy nose, very common and typical, and it's usual with the common cold. So again, we'll differentiate this from a virus in just a moment. But sneezing, not typically the same as the flu. We'll go into some of these. Same with the sore throat, same with runny nose, same with the stuffy nose. And a fever, maybe, maybe, not always and not typical with the common cold, but certainly possible. And it usually, though, will not be as high. So you might have a low-grade fever, 99, 100, under 101, okay? But the higher pitch fever would be more for a a virus. And I'll share with you, of course, how things are very unique with the COVID-19 virus. Okay, so those are the most common symptoms for the common cold. What would a common cold be? Well, it's basically your nose congestion, your hearing and ears may be a little blocked. You might get a sore throat, some difficulty swallowing a little bit. You're going to feel a little bit of fatigue. There might be a low-grade fever. There's some weakness with the body. It's your typical cold, and you'll see this quite often. Now, we still have to worry about this. It's not like we can't worry about any colds or viruses or allergies. We should be concerned with all of them. And it's simply because the common cold could turn into chest congestion and it could turn into a sinus-based infection or an air-based infection. So we want to take care of it at the first signs of an issue. And we'll go over some of those protocols towards the end. They're not going to differ very wildly for a cold or virus. And that's because what works oftentimes for a virus, at least from a foundational level, will work for the common cold as well. And that's because what we're doing is we're boosting the immune system and we're boosting our body's innate response to respond to a pathogen in the body. That's the difference with natural medicine. We don't cure anything. We don't treat anything. And what we do is we say, okay, the body knows how to heal this, but what we need to do is supply the body with all the raw material so that it can heal the body, right? So we're not playing creator and we're not saying, okay, well, we know how to fix all of this. We're simply giving the body the nutrients that it needs and some particular herbs in order to overcome this virus or cold. Okay, so that's the common cold. The next one I want to go over with you is viruses. So viruses, I'm going to go over the specifics for COVID-19 at the just tail end of the virus part of this. But a typical virus, you are going to get one of the hallmark signs of a virus is going to be a headache, which is much more common than with a common cold, but doesn't you don't have to have it, but it's common. The aches and pains, very common, especially with the flu. So that would be your, you know, your knees and your joints start to ache. Very, very common, without a doubt. Again, the headache I spoke about, think of that as a pain. And then a higher fever, and it can last for about 72 hours. So about three to four days would be the fever. And the fever is not your 101 or below. It's typically above 101, where the common body temperature for most people is going to be in the 98s. Again, I did in-office exams for many, many years, and the common temperature would be, well, the, the normal temperature should be anywhere in the 98s. If we saw someone in the 97s, it meant that there was typically a lowered metabolic rate. The body was dealing with chronic stress, it was dealing with lower thyroid, etc., And if someone was above a 99, well, they were dealing with a low-grade fever, the body constantly fighting something. So it's very interesting. Your temperature can tell you a lot about your health. Typically, you want to take it first thing in the morning, but of course, you can take it any time of the day. And if you have a cold, you'll take it throughout the day, a cold or virus. So we'll call it an illness, and illness is going to mean cold or flu or virus, flu being a type of virus, the influenza. So again, hallmark is the fever. And uh, this is in particular flu. You don't always have to have a higher temperature. What happens is there's a lot more fatigue. The body is really boosting white blood cells levels. It's putting a lot of energy towards the immune system. And the other interesting thing about a virus is you may never get a stuffy nose. You may never get any sneezing. You might not get a sore throat. You might not have any coughing. It just it often does not happen. Your body is fighting this virus, and it does not always lead to the ear, nose, and throat congestion. So, you know, again, viruses need to be taken seriously, just as serious as a cold. The difference with a virus and a cold, cold could be bacterial-based, and a virus is viral-based. 
So the difference, though, just keep in mind is that antibiotics or antibacterials are not going to work for a virus. So a lot of times, especially when I was younger, your physician would prescribe you antibiotics even if it was a virus. That's the worst thing you could do because what happens is it actually weakens your immune system for the future and allows you to be more susceptible to bacterial-based issues in the future. So antibiotics do not work for viruses. I just very, very uh, important. Now, there are antiviral medications. However, most people will not need them. What else? Complications of a virus or particularly the flu could be bronchitis, could be pneumonia. And those are much more serious. So whenever we have inflammation in the lining of the lungs and an inability to clear all of that mucus, well, that that can obviously be life-threatening. And of course, that is what we're dealing with right now with the COVID-19 virus. Keep in mind, the difference with between a regular virus and COVID-19 Some of the symptoms, you'll have the fever, okay? Most people with COVID-19 who exhibit symptoms, again, hopefully you're following along with my videos at stephencabral.com forward slash virus. I'm also posting them in our Facebook group, cabralsupportgroup.com, where we're answering your questions there. And I'm also posting them on Instagram, which is instagram.com forward slash Stephen Cabral. And of course, if you're on the app, it's just Stephen Cabral, Stephen with a PH. I am posting it there. 80% of people will not have symptoms or very mild symptoms. So again, that's why most people, probably 99 plus percent of the population, when they get the COVID-based virus, they will be perfectly fine and may have just mild symptoms. And the symptoms then for people with a more exacerbated response would be fever, a cough, shortness of breath, a quite a bit of fatigue, if not complete exhaustion, and a lot of those flu-like symptoms. So if you are exhibiting those symptoms, you absolutely should seek out medical-based attention. That means going to your hospital, that means seeing your doctor, whatever you need to do. Because remember, I've always maintained and I've always said that there is nothing better than natural-based medicine in terms of healing chronic and long-standing-based conditions. But when it is an acute-based medical issue where your life is threatened, you should absolutely seek out the best of conventional medicine. So that means if you are in the most susceptible group, 65 plus years old, or you're immune compromised, or your body's in a weakened state, you absolutely should get tested right away. And you should get medical attention whenever needed, especially if you do have any type of cough, if you have that high fever, if you have shortness of breath, very, very important to get tested. And again, test results are not coming back right now for somewhere between three and seven days. So you may need medical attention and you may need to be hospitalized, but those are precautions and we should take precautions right now, especially for those people that need it the most. And those are the people in the most sensitive bracket, specifically 75 plus where it's affecting those people the most, but also those people that are in a weakened state or immune compromised. So again, difference with fever, sorry, difference with the virus, higher fever and a lot of joint pain, oftentimes a headache and much fatigue. So hopefully that helps in terms of virus. Now, the big one is allergies. This is the whole reason I decided to do today's show is because we are now in allergy season. So in the United States, we're moving into the spring. There's pollen, there's things budding, there's grass coming up. And in places like Australia, on the other side of the world, well, they have fall and they have their own allergy season there as well. So please do be mindful of allergy-based symptoms, okay? And these can range from very mild to very severe. I had some of the most severe allergies that anyone could have, meaning I had to be indoors, isolated for about two to three weeks every beginning of every April, and it was debilitating. I'm talking about eyes being swelled shut, feeling like I had paper cuts all over the inside of my eyes, just unbelievable itchiness, horrible, horrible symptoms, mainly affecting the eyes, but certainly itchiness in the uh, nose, mouth as well. So I'll just let you know that I had to heal my body from a much deeper level in order to remove these allergies. And that was fixing my candida overgrowth, my H. pylori and my SIBO. That was a big part of it, but also improving my overall adrenal response. And that means my body's ability to actually produce cortisol. A lot of people believe cortisol is the enemy, and it is if it's very high, but low, low cortisol makes you much more susceptible to allergies because you don't have a natural anti-inflammatory response to your own internal environment, which are called endotoxins, and your external environment, which are exotoxins. And an exotoxin in this case for some people would be mold, it would be pollen, it would be grass, it would be dust, anything in the outside environment. 
Very, very important to look at that. Too high cortisol, it's not good. It suppresses the immune system. Too low to cortisol doesn't allow for a proper anti-inflammatory response. Always remember, the body is all about being balanced and creating the state of equilibrium rather than being pushed too hard in any one direction. So common allergy symptoms, sneezing, runny or stuffy nose, watery or itchy eyes, itchy sinuses, itchy ears even. A lot of people have itchy ears. Sometimes it's yeast overgrowth, candida overgrowth, and sometimes it's actually allergies. Itchy throat, you can have blocked ears, you can have post-nasal drip with this, you can have allergies being particularly exacerbated first thing in the morning, but especially in the evening. If symptoms seem to get worse in the evening when cortisol levels are at their lowest, could certainly be allergies as well. Um, Not as common with allergies would be a headache, but certainly I used to get headaches every afternoon with allergies, so you can certainly have that. Not as common as the shortness of breath, not as common as joint pain. You typically won't have that. Not as common with coughing, except post-nasal drip in the evening. What I can tell you is that biggest difference is is you will have the fatigue with allergies. Remember, your body's going to be run down, no doubt about it, but you should not have a fever. Okay, allergies should not create a fever. So if you have a fever, then you're going to look towards whether it being a viral based issue or the common cold. And right now, of course, we're more concerned with viruses. So that is that with allergies. Biggest differentiator is no fever. Okay, really important. There is fatigue, but it might not be complete exhaustion like with a virus. There's not the joint pain typically as much either. So remember, those things are all important. Now, viruses can lead to sinus infections and they can lead to chest congestion as well. So I want us to be aware of that. And that's why we want to be doing things proactively to make sure that that doesn't happen. So let's give a quick recap and then let's give you some things that you can be doing. In the common cold, it is rare to have a high fever. However, you could have a low-grade fever below 101. With a virus, common to have a fever above 101. And with allergies, you are typically not going to have a fever. It's more rare to have a headache with a cold, very common with the flu, and just or very prominent with the flu and common with allergies. Again, I told you I had one pretty much every single afternoon. The joint pains, the aches and pains, minor with the cold, often and severe with flu or virus, and never typically with allergies. The fatigue, mild with the, with the cold, yes, absolutely common with a virus, and somewhat common, but not as common with allergy, meaning like it's more mild. Exhaustion, not typically with a common cold, very prominent with a virus, and I would it says in this chart unusual for exhaustion, but I would actually say it's pretty common with allergies. I mean, I was exhausted when I had allergies. Think about it. Your immune system is always on. It's always fighting these, uh, what they see as pathogens or invaders, right? The pollen, the grass, the mold, the dust, food sensitivity. So just keep in mind, it, it is common, even though the chart says it's unusual. Stuffy nose, it's common with a cold and with allergies, not as common with a virus. Sneezing, common with a common cold, sometimes with a virus and common with allergies, meaning typical. Sore throat is common with a cold, sometimes with a virus, sometimes with allergies. Difference with allergies, you typically get the itchiness along with it. The chest discomfort or congestion, mild or moderate with a cold, sometimes a hacking productive cough. It can be quite common or severe with a virus. The difference with COVID-19 is that it's not a productive cough. And uh, that's one of the biggest danger points around COVID-19 is people's ability, especially in the immune compromised group, to cough up that mucus and congestion. Sometimes with allergies, but oftentimes just from the post-nasal drip. So again, I will link this chart up for you at stephencabral.com forward slash 1517. All right, what to do? Well, we've got lots of podcasts and shows on how to help you with many of these things. But what I want to do is make this very simple. For a cold or a virus, I would like you to go to stephencabral.com forward slash virus. And you're going to see in there that we're recommending a daily activated multi or the daily nutritional support, the daily fruit and vegetable blend for getting in extra fruit and vegetables, omega-3s for balancing inflammation, which helps not only cold and virus, but also allergies. Very, very important to get your omega-3s with allergies. And also daily probiotic support, which helps all three categories as well. Improving gut health is extremely important, especially acidophilus with allergies. Okay, now 
what we add on top of that is vitamin C. Okay, that's for all three of these. Extremely, extremely important. And then we're adding in zinc for all three of these. Again, extremely important. And the last one, just as a must have, is vitamin D. So vitamin D, zinc, and vitamin C, those are your three go-tos whenever you need to boost the immune system. Now, keep in mind, allergies, your TH2 side of the immune system is already boosted, meaning like if you have allergies, if you have asthma, you're most likely a TH2 dominant individual. That means you need to work on the gut, you need to work on the adrenals, you need to work on, though, lowering your total toxic load, right? Empty in your rain barrel. So that will help, but that's going to take some time, right? You can't just do it in a week or two. That's not how it works. A seasonal detox absolutely works. This show is going live April 1st, recording this on Friday. So we'll be starting our spring detox with our community on Monday, March 30th, just a couple days before that. Of course, you're welcome to join us at any time. I consider the spring detox one of the most important detoxes to do. Because what you want to do is, just like they've done now for thousands of years, eliminate all of these stored toxins, acids, and wastes from the winter. Why that's important is that our body actually acts in a different way during the wintertime. Whenever it's colder, our body starts to store more. It's one of the reasons why it's oftentimes a little bit more challenging to lose weight during the colder winter months. It's normal to have a slowing of metabolism. It's normal to have a little bit more acidity in the tissues as well. Again, this has been known for many thousands of years, and that fast during the spring was always a welcome time because oftentimes it helped to reduce those seasonal allergies and the changing of the season. Okay, so we've given you those three main ones. Another great one for boosting overall immunity is Manuka honey. That could be one simply a half a teaspoon twice a day or one teaspoon twice a day is fine. There's a bunch more for viruses. And again, I have a whole viral show linked up as well. It's called How to Destroy Viruses. And you can simply go to stephencabral.com forward slash podcast where all the other previous podcasts are. And you could link up that show. So you would just type in destroy viruses. I'll do it right now with you and we'll find it together. So just go to stephencabral.com forward slash podcast. I do the same exact thing as you. I scroll down the page and find the search bar. And I'm just going to type in destroy viruses. And it's already in there because I've looked this up many times. I should probably have it memorized. It's in the 700s. That's all I know. And it's 760. So you can go to stephencabral.com forward slash podcast, type in destroy viruses, and you'll find it. It's the second one down or simply go to stephencabral.com forward slash 760. There you'll find additional items I recommend for those people dealing with like a herpes-based virus or any other type of virus where they want to boost their immunity, Epstein-Barr virus, many others. Again, this is not to treat, diagnose, cure, prevent any of those things. Remember, only licensed medical doctors can give you that type of okay. When we're dealing with natural health and natural medicine, what we're looking to do again is to balance the body. When the body is balanced, when it's achieved a state of what's called dynamic equilibrium that all of the previous natural hygienists, naturopaths, everyone has taught us before, the body is able to heal itself. That's what we're looking to do. So on that show, you'll find information about colloidal silver. You'll find information about L-lysine. You'll find information about elderberry. You'll find information about monolaurin, everything that you can imagine. And they're all great, but people are asking me, should I be using them now? My recommendation is to use them when you need them, right? So additional supplements, specialty supplements like the ones I just named, the monolaurin, etc., are all valuable, but they do not need to be used unless your body needs them. Remember, they're supplementing a healthy diet. They're supplementing a healthy human being. So that's when I recommend them the most. Then we have something called our allergy protocol, and that is our hist Pro, which is a product that contains natural antihistamines. You can look them up, nettles or stinging nettles. You can look up quercetin. All of these things are absolutely amazing. So it's called Hist Pro, H I S T P R O. That's at equilibriumnutrition.com. And of course, alkalizing vitamin C. Alkalizing vitamin C is the buffered form of vitamin C. It allows you to not alkalize the blood, but alkalize the tissues to a greater degree, get more minerals into your body, and a higher dose vitamin C is allowed. Vitamin C is a natural antihistamine. I recommend doing, just during allergy season, a higher dose of vitamin C. Some people will take it to bowel tolerance. Some people will just simply keep their dosage somewhere between two and a half grams to 10 grams during allergy based season and then coming back down to one to two grams or so per day, which is typically where I take 
or keep my vitamin C. So hopefully today's podcast has been helpful. I'm happy to answer additional questions. You can ask them right on Instagram. You can ask them at cabralsupportgroup.com. Do let me know. And of course, if this show was helpful, please do feel free to pass it along to anyone else you believe it could serve right at stephencabral.com forward slash 1517. Take care, everyone. Be well. Before you go, I wanted to share a personal story with you. The real reason I began to get well finally is because I figured out what was wrong with me. And that might seem pretty obvious, but I went from doctor to doctor for over two years before discovering at-home functional medicine lab testing. These are the labs that enabled me to finally figure out what was wrong with my hormones, blood sugar, electrolytes, and gut health. And once I knew what was wrong, I could then follow a proven plan in order to rebalance my body from the inside out. This is why I believe so strongly in functional medicine lab testing and why I've made it my mission to share these labs with the world. Now at equa.life, you can order an at-home lab test or a lab bundle for you and your family and be able to complete it within the week. Plus, the Equal Life difference is that you're not left to try to read and figure out these labs on your own. We explain what your lab numbers mean, what they mean in the much bigger picture, and then how to go about rebalancing your body in order to heal. To see our full selection of lab tests or to set up a free lab selection call to find out what labs may be best for you, simply head on over to equa.life forward slash labs. And do remember, we ship these all over the world. To find out more and to set up your free lab selection call, simply head on over to equa.life forward slash labs. That's E-Q-U-I dot L-I-F-E forward slash labs.